How's it going? It's me, the Crew Loser, and I'm going to be reviewing an application to replace your keyboard, and it is called SwiftKey X. SwiftKey X has been my favorite keyboard for a very long time, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to personalize this application. I got many of you guys asking me, how do you theme it out? Those of you guys who never heard of use SwiftKey, you're going to love this keyboard. Let's have a closer look at the keyboard. As you can see right here, orange lit letters, and we can see the numbers are in there. If you long press on the three, indeed, number three came out. So you don't have to open up your keypad every time. You have your standard QWERTY keyboard. Press on that to capitalize, and there's to lock the capitalization and to unlock it. Now let's check out the number pad. I like the number pad, how it's all in right here. It's so easy to know. Lots of keyboard have the number pads up here when you switch it onto the keyboard. I don't like that. I like it this way a lot better. It's quicker to get to, and you can see your other symbols that are up right there. Click on that, you get more symbols. And also, if you hold down on here, you'll get to your smiley faces, so this counts as putting different emojis as well. You see that on Enter? I love the look of this keyboard. Spacers are perfect for me. Let's take a look at it in landscape mode. Landscape keyboard. What else in the theme? You can see show foreign characters. So you'll see different characters on the keyboard. Select arrow keys. Go back to the keyboard. And now we have arrow keys down here. Now I'm going to select this button. And you can see that I can go to settings, share, voice input, and support. Firstly, when you run this application, we got language and layouts. In this section here, you'll be able to download multiple languages, as I have just one. If you know more, you'll be able to search through available languages. As you can see there, there's a list that goes on. For a quick example, if I have English and Afrikaans, Dansk, the keyboard is not going to freak out and not know what I'm saying. If I'm typing something in Afrikaans, it's going to know, even if I do English and Afrikaans and Dansk, it's going to know the right languages, the right spelling. I'm clicking back. Okay, right now I'm going to show you the keyboard. Here's my Twitter, and you can follow me at the Cool Loser. And here's the keyboard. I love it. Check this out. Thanks for sharing. Hey, look at the choices. W, what's up with the latest news? How many times did I have to press that? Not very many. Many of you guys can type really quick. If your sentence is predictable, it'll give you three choices up here for the next word. So you won't have to type in each every letter for here. You'll just be able to see it up here. If it's not in there, it'll learn from your texting. So if you said something before that was like maybe eight words in one sentence, you'll have it all in order once again up here that you'll be able to press. Personalization. Go in here. And here we have learn from Facebook. What this means is if you use Facebook on your phone, even on your computer, if you type in stuff, this will actually learn how you message and comment on people. It'll learn your phrases and how you talk. Learn from Gmail. If you do lots of emails, here's the same thing. Whatever you enter, it'll be saving up. Learn from Twitter, same thing, guys. All you got to do is go down here and authorize the apps to give them permission to learn from all your input on all these social networks. Learn from RSS feeds, learn from SMS. Clear language data, I never press this because I want everything that it knows to be saved. I click back. So that's a personalization to make it learn. Now here's the themes. People ask me all the time, what's your keyboard? I love it. How do you theme it that way? Well, here it is, the theme area. Go into theme and you will see that I have a dark, light, neon, and pumpkin. Pumpkin is my favorite. And let's change the theme real quick. Pumpkin. Let's go to neon, and here is the neon keyboard. As you can see, I have that press around. There's the light, and here's the light keyboard. It looks a lot better than what my camera's picking up. It looks more like this, and this one has a little pop-up of where you're pressing on the keys. Go into dark, and here is the dark theme. And put goes green. There's a little thing right here. You press on it, and you go to settings. And this is where you can go to it without having to go open up the application. You get to it from there. And here we are in the advanced typing styles and other settings. Typing style. I have it on precise where careful typists who often choose predictions. That's me. On rapid is for fast typists who rely on auto corrections. Now I go into spacebar. This section is very important because some of you guys who always press a space, that means that when you press the spacebar, it won't give you the correct word that's in the middle. Here, let me just show you an example. This. Here we have thistle, this, and thus. If I don't want this to auto-select it, I'm just going to press space. And it does it. Complete the current word. 
And let's put in Monday. Now see, I'm not done yet. If I press the space bar, it already did the whole Monday. So that's what did it. It helped me out instead of having to select up here. The space bar will complete the word. Or if you select always insert prediction, and let's say, hey, what's up? Hey. What? Up. See that? So all I had to do is press space. Didn't have to go up here, just space, space, space. So you know, you'll have to figure out how you like it the best. And I like to keep it on complete the current word. And here we have a quick setting. Double tapping the space bar inserts a period. Space, space. You know, Monday always has a capital M. If you wanted to automatically capitalize it, select this little section. Audio and haptic feedback. As you can see, I don't have any key press sounds. I only have the vibration in the back key. So when I press it, I can feel it. And let's see if you can hear it. But if you want to hear the noise, press that. Key press sound volume. You can choose if it's too loud or too silent. And here we have voice recognition to enable it. Here in this little area, we see a little microphone. Hold down on it. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? And let's select that. And here's enabling gestures. This is what it does. So thanks for sharing. Now let's erase, erase, erase. Pretty cool. Check it out for thanks. It capitalizes it all. So that's different gestures with the keyboard away. Portrait key height. If you don't like the height of the keyboard, I'll put my thumb on it to show where it's at. And let's do a small. And let's open it up again. And look at it where it's at now. So it shrunk. And let's do large. And look how tall we're now. I keep it on normal. So yeah, that's in the advanced section. Lots of stuff there. SwiftKey X stat. This is all your info on how you do on your phone. With this SwiftKey X keyboard, you can see, see how accurate you type. And these are my spots where I'm pressing, and I'm pressing pretty accurate, so it does pretty good. If you want to learn more than what I showed you, support the guy, give him more ideas about the SwiftKey X. That is SwiftKey X for you guys. SwiftKey X, one of the best keyboards that I've ever used. I recommend it to everybody. Everybody loves it, especially since it predicts your sentences. So you have to use it a lot in the very beginning in order for it to kind of learn off of you and, you know, predict you. You will not see me without this application. See you guys. The Kuru series.